Ventilator parameters are the settings and measurements used to control how a mechanical ventilator helps a patient breathe. Broadly, these parameters fall into two categories, the settings that the clinician sets called input parameters and the measurements the ventilator displays as it interacts with the patient called output parameters. The inputs directly signal the ventilator to deliver the breath. The output parameters reflecting the patient's response to ventilation helps assessing the effectiveness of ventilation and performing necessary adjustment. Tidal volume refers to the amount of air delivered to the lungs with each breath during mechanical ventilation. The recommended tidal volume range for most patients is typically between 6 to 8 milliliters per kilogram of ideal body weight. For example, if a patient has an ideal body weight of 70 kilograms, the tidal volume would fall within the range of 420 milliliters to 560 milliliters. In the case of acute respiratory distress syndrome where the lung compliance is reduced, a common recommendation is to use lower tidal volumes, generally between 4 to 6 milliliters per kg. Using lower tidal volume reduces the risk of lung overdistension and injury. The output parameter such as plateau pressure can guide tidal volume adjustments, with most clinicians aiming to keep plateau pressure below 30 centimeters of water. Tidal volume is also vital in the process of washing out carbon dioxide from the lungs. Adjusting the tidal volume directly influences minute ventilation, which is the total volume of air entering or leaving the lungs per minute and is calculated by this formula. An increase in tidal volume elevates minute ventilation, enhancing the removal of carbon dioxide from the bloodstream and thereby lowering PaCO2 levels. Conversely, Reducing the tidal volume decreases minute ventilation, leading to CO2 retention and elevated PCO2 levels. However, it is important to be cautious when adjusting tidal volume, as excessively high settings can result in ventilator-induced lung injury. Regular monitoring of blood gas levels is essential to ensure the appropriate balance between ventilation and lung protection. The approach to tidal volume setting varies between different modes of mechanical ventilation. In volume-controlled ventilation, the clinician sets the desired tidal volume, and the ventilator delivers this volume with each breath, adjusting the inspiratory pressure based on the patient's lung compliance and airway resistance. This mode ensures consistent tidal volume delivery, although the peak inspiratory pressures may fluctuate. In contrast, pressure-controlled ventilation allows the clinician to set the inspiratory pressure, and the ventilator delivers breaths at that pressure. The resulting tidal volume will depend on the patient's lung compliance and airway resistance, ensuring consistent inspiratory pressure but potentially varying tidal volumes with each breath. Fraction of inspired oxygen represents the percentage of oxygen in the air mixture delivered to the patient. Adjusting FiO2 is crucial for ensuring adequate oxygenation, especially in patients with hypoxemia. Ventilators often start with an FiO2 of 100% to rapidly achieve optimal oxygenation. Once the patient's oxygen levels stabilize, FiO2 is gradually reduced to the lowest effective concentration to maintain adequate oxygen saturation. FiO2 can be adjusted between 21%, equivalent to room air and 100% depending on the patient's needs. The goal is to use the minimum FiO2 necessary to achieve target oxygenation levels. Continuous assessment of arterial blood gases and oxygen saturation is essential to guide FiO2 adjustments, ensuring sufficient oxygenation while avoiding hyperoxia. As the patient's respiratory status improves, FiO2 should be titrated down to maintain adequate oxygenation with the least supplemental oxygen required.